Here we go. This messy looking thing is my uh, concrete form for the slab I'm going to put where the wood stove is going. Uh, it's pretty good. This is laminated wood for a nice smooth surface. My plan is to cover screws and gaps with some scotch tape, essentially. Uh, it's actually going to be packing tape. I'm not going to bother with putting any silicone beads or anything. Uh, I saw some instructions online for that, but it just seems kind of silly. I, I think the tape will be fine. Alright, so here's the rebar. I attached this using ties. And uh, this tool right here, you just want to pull up while you twist it around these loops here. And the strength doesn't actually come from these. It actually, uh, these are really just here to make sure that it holds its shape while you're doing the pour. Alright, so here's my uh, sort of leaning platform. Pretty simple construction. Just made out of the crap I had laying around. Here it is. A slab in the house. This is uh, still completely wet. It's looking nice and glassy. So this turned out pretty well. For some reason it hmm. seems to be pretty loose on the surface now that I'm messing with this a little bit. Super weird. I uh, swept off this much material from the surface. <laughs> it feels like uh, slightly damp cement, but it's, it's like it just didn't cure. Okay, this is super weird. Can you hear that? <laughs> it's actually reacting. Like an acid in a base or something. Like it's foaming. It, it lasts a short while, but... What the heck? Okay, so I did a little bit of research. And uh, apparently, when it's powdery like that, it's called dusting. And generally, it is uh, due to too much water during the curing process. Now, I followed the instructions on how much water to add. Um, however, it's it's very commonly a problem uh, with indoor pores, particularly from what I read. It's also possible that it was just not a good mix. It could have just been a little bit off or something like that. I'd like to just blame the manufacturer. <laughs> but I think the sun really helps you out a lot, and there just was not any sun. So uh, that coupled with the fact that the HVAC was cooling down the room, I was sweating a lot while doing it, so I decided to kick up the H back and uh, cool down. So, um, now the way to fix it is to rough up the surface, get all the loose stuff off, and then just do a, another coat, another finished coat. So, this is after I put on a top coat of... Uh, cement patch because I had dusting. So I scoured it down and then I put a probably about an eighth of an inch on top using some patch, which is a much finer aggregate. Also I switched out these lights. I guess it's probably isn't gonna catch them. They're they're kinda ugly. I, I don't really like them that much. I might get different lights. One of the reasons I decided to stop and take a video was because I looked for a while on the internet whether you can sand concrete or cement and you find things like polishing and you know using diamond based abrasives and I decided to give it a shot with just some sandpaper because I just wanted to get a little bit of the roughness off of this and sure enough this is 220 grit and yeah you can actually sand cement pretty well if you're just trying to smooth it a little bit Here we go, I pulled off some painter's tape and 
the edge looks pretty good. I sort of made a mess in a few spots, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm debating running a line of acrylic caulk along here just to help protect the paint. Here we have it, the installed wood stove. I just finished up drywalling, plastering, and then putting this uh, pattern all over it with a roller. And then it dried, and then I put acrylic caulk down, and before that dried, since I didn't really have to wait, I stuck these trim pieces on here that were left with this. And then I used a little black silicone just along this edge to, to kind of merge the two together. So give it a sharp look. If you've been watching this series of videos, you might be thinking, I skipped some steps here because suddenly there's a wood stove. <coughs> But the reason is because I had to hire a professional installation company for liability purposes. Your insurance company will probably have its own standards. I use Allstate and they, uh, after picking their brain about it, they said that inspection is unnecessary. Them having a specific type of insurance for installing wood stoves is unnecessary. The only requirement is that they be a professional company installing the wood stove. So that's pretty vague. So you can see our alignment was a little bit off. That makes sense. This was originally a fireplace. It turned out pretty well though. I have yet to do any initial firings on this. I plan to get it inspected first. Overall it went pretty well. It took 16 man hours for them to get this installed and put the chimney in. That was between two guys, they took eight hours each, and I asked them if that was a particularly complex installation, and they said no, it was a simple one. <laughs> so apparently putting this thing in takes about 16 man hours. 